Uh, once again, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, volunteers of our organization here present. It is indeed a pleasure for us to receive you this morning on the occasion of International Human Rights Day. Bekanya would like to take this opportunity to wish everyone a happy Human Rights Day. December 10th is observed annually as a Human Rights Day. This was the date that the General Assembly of the United Nations adopted in 1948 the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is UDHR, and it's 75 years today. This year's slogan is Dignity, Freedom, and Justice for All, which is very important for the Gambia as we build our democracy and nurture the culture of human rights in our country. Ladies and gentlemen, the declaration set out universal rights and equal worth for every person. During the year under review, it is our belief as an organization, one of the leading human rights organizations in this country, that significant improvements have been made in terms of human rights advancing human rights story in this country. However, the country is far from regaining her lost glory of becoming a beacon of hope in Africa as far as human rights protection is concerned. And I'll elaborate this further. So ladies and gentlemen, when I said the country is far from becoming a beacon of hope, when it comes to respect for human rights, here are our justifications and our concerns. One, gender-based violence. Especially rape and domestic violence, female genital mutilation and cutting, early and child marriages are common all over the Gambia, and these are all against fundamental human rights. And they are happening every day, every time in our country. Number two, increase in crime rate. We must remind the government of the Gambia about the increase in crime rate and murder cases in the country, and remind the government of its obligation of protecting the rights of every person living in the Gambia, irrespective of who they are. We've seen the incidents that took place in Bakau and elsewhere in the country it's unfortunate that Gambians are beginning to realize that even though we said we have democracy, in a broad daylight, one among us will just be killed like that. Our institutions, security apparatus, have an obligation to protect me and you and everyone else living in our country. Life, right to life, sorry. It's a fundamental human right set forth in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And states are obliged to protect this fundamental human rights, and the Gambia government should not be found one thing. Number three, denial for peaceful protest. The Gambian constitution guaranteed citizens to express their dissatisfaction about the way and manner things are running in the country through peaceful protest. But the Gambian authorities, through the Gambia police force, continue to deny peaceful protesters permit to stage this very important exercise. Recent one we've seen was the Gambians who want to protest about the high cost of living and the way the country has been governed. They were denied, but that's just one. Series of organizations were denied permit by the Gambia police force in contravention of their right to peaceful assembly and protest. So we're calling on the Gambian authorities to open up the democratic space by allowing citizens to come out, express their concerns on issues affecting them. When they do that, that is going to be good for our democracy. Otherwise, if you deny people the right to protest and express their dissatisfaction with issues, what happens is that they take the law into their own hand. And they go by expressing their grievances 
in probably in a way that may not be in conformity with the law. And therefore, the call for the authorities is to open up the democratic space and allow citizens to protest. But also, it's the responsibility of the Gambia police force to provide security to the protesters, to ensure that they express whatever feeling they have and communicate to the authorities. Four, citizens continue discontent with the Senegalese, Senegalese contingent of the economic forces in the Fony area. Recently, we've heard from the National Assembly members in the Fonies expressing their dissatisfaction with the presence of the Senegalese contingent of the economic forces. Gambia government is urged to listen to the people of Fony, especially their National Assembly members, and ensure that the alleged human rights violations that they are complaining are addressed and stopped. Fony, like any part of the country, and the people of Fony in particular, deserve the protection of their fundamental human rights. And therefore, people cannot continue to live in the atmosphere of fear. fear. And every day, even they, they, they go to their farmlands, as we are told, or they go to, their, uh, to go fetch firewood, they live in that um, environment of fear. Just this morning, I saw in the news that just yesterday, somebody was also uh, shot with a drone in, in, in the Fony area. This is unacceptable. And uh, if it is not the economic, economic uh, sorry for that, economic uh, contingent, we urge the Gambia government to engage the Senegalese authorities to ensure that the lives and the properties of the Gambians, especially those in the Fony area, are protected to the fullest. Ladies and gentlemen, as we review the human rights developments in the country during the past 12 months, we must also take the cognizance of the fact that the high cost of living is becoming unbearable for the Gambian. The Gambian government has an obligation to put in right policies and programs to ensure that no one goes home hungry. No one goes to bed hungry, I mean. But when you engage the authorities, they will say, war in Ukraine. Yes, we agree. COVID-19 was the first excuse. Now war in Ukraine. But the Gambia is not the only country that is experiencing these problems when it to, with regards to the war in Ukraine. Our government must put in right policies and programs to make sure that no one goes to bed hungry. And the, 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 the saddest part of it is that the prices are skyrocketing every day. And we know the socio-economic rights of the citizens are undermined by this high cost of living. Everyone deserves to live a dignified life. How could you do that? When you go to market today, you buy something, a bag of rice, 2,500, tomorrow morning, 2,600, and salaries are stagnant. This is a cause for concern. And as a human rights organization, we are signaling that the government should look into this seriously. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, the environmental destruction by mining companies in coastal communities Healthy environment is a human right, according to the United Nations. Recently, we visited coastal communities like Bato Kunku, Sanyang, and other places. The, the level of destruction going on there is unbearable. The Gambia government needs to look into the welfare of these coastal communities and ensure that the mining companies uh, protect the rights of the communities that they are extracting those, in those, 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 those minerals. Because at the end of the day, you are, you, you are uh, violating their rights, you are not even meeting up your social corporate responsibility, but again, you, you feel like you can just do it because you have a lancing. So this is a call not only to central government, but to the geology department, and also uh, the National Environment Agency. They have to definitely do ensure that before they give lancings to any mining companies, the environment assessment must be done because that's the essence of environment impact assessment to ensure that we are not destroying the environment but also we are not undermining the livelihoods of the communities. Ladies and gentlemen, number seven, TRRC report and government white paper implementation. We've said this on several occasions and we'll repeat it today on this very important day marking World Human Rights Day. The Gambia government made no mistake 
if they do not implement to the fullest the recommendations of the TRRC, the victims are suffering and they are waiting for justice. And justice delayed, we all know, is justice denied. A good number of victims are suffering, they are in pain. And if the never again slogan mantra of this country will be realized, we must implement the TRRC recommendations to the latter, irrespective of who is affected. Number eight, maltreatment of innocent citizens by security forces. During Jammes era, this was the order of the day. Some of you who, were, who, who, who might have been around, even though you might not be around, but you follow it in the news, in the media, how they were abusing citizens' rights. We thought that this is the history in this country. It's going to be history. But I can tell you for certain as a human rights organization, we are documenting some of these things. Even last week, some of it, one of it happened. A teacher in one of our intervention schools, go to senior secondary school, was maltreated by security officers. This is unacceptable. And we condemn this act. And we call on the relevant authorities to put a stop to this and make sure those found wanted face the full force of the law. That is the only way we can, we can, we can move and have a culture of human rights in our country. Ladies and gentlemen, now to our recommendations. I've said it already. Government need to speed up the security sector reform. Because it is through the security sector reform that we'll be able to know the progress that we've been made, we, we were made by the government during the past couple of years in ensuring that we have a very professional and a well-disciplined force and clean up the force and ensure that people who deserve to be there are there. Those who deserve to be somewhere else also go there. And that will bring hope and sanity in the whole service. So that is a key recommendation. They have to fast track the process. Two, I said it. I said the implementation of the TRRC report. So again, I must also say that citizens must endeavor to learn more about their rights. Believe in human rights. The problem in this country is that a good number of people still believe that human rights are foreign ideologies. If you don't believe in something, you cannot fight it. And if you don't fight it, if you don't believe in it, you cannot learn more to know about it. And what is going to happen at the end of the day? Someone who is comfortable abusing your right will take advantage of your weakness because you don't know your right and they continue violating your right. And that is why still now human rights violations are taking place all over the country because a good number of people, to be honest, do not know their rights or they are scared to speak up. So therefore citizens must endeavor to speak up and stand for human rights. Government through the National Assembly should pass the Prevention and Prohibition of Torture Bill. As of now, there is no law in the Gambia where you can charge somebody for torture. And that is why the security forces can just torture you. We need that law in this country. And surprisingly, the bill is lying at the National Assembly. We need to pass that law so that security forces who might be found wanting will face the full force of the law. Government must take appropriate measures to address public sector corruption in our country for the realization of social economic rights. Of late, we have a lot of noise about corruption in this country, especially in the public sector. You know very well that human rights cannot be realized, a good number of rights cannot be realized, especially socioeconomic rights cannot be realized without resources. Access to health care, access to education, they are fundamental human rights. And they are, they are important. But government will tell you that we don't have enough resources. That is why we cannot provide school for everybody. That's why we cannot provide a primary, a basic health care for everyone. But how could you provide that if the meager resources are looted by certain individuals? So you can see the correlation between uh, corruption and respect for human rights. So government must take concrete measures to address the issue of um, corruption, especially in the public sector. Women political participation and representation is a fundamental human right. As so government should take concrete steps to address the low representation of women in decision-making processes through affirmative actions. How many female ministers do we have in this country? Even the last cabinet, we had more than now. 
go to the National Assembly? Very few. And we said women, women empowerment, women empowerment, women empowerment. And we know women representation is a human rights issue. But what are we doing to ensure that women are there? So we challenge the government to take affirmative actions. It's only through that we can definitely address the gap. So the Gambia, I must say that the Gambia uh, is duty bound like any other country as stipulated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the International Covenant on, Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights and in, in all the human rights instruments to ensure that education, that is human rights education, is aimed at strengthening respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. Ladies and gentlemen, I think the electricity is going on the right side. With this, I want to pause here and entertain questions with all these broad issues of human rights in our country that we are confronted with. You are now free to bombard us with your questions on human rights in the Gambia. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Mr. Jolie.